اعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله انتجبه لولايته واختصه برسالته واكرمه بالنبوه امينا على غيبه ورحمه للعالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى الطاهرين الذين اذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا In today's khutbah, I would like to begin with a story which is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim in their Sahih. Now, this is actually a story from Miqdad, the famous companion of the Prophet. And he, in his conversation with the Prophet of Islam, he raises a hypothetical situation and he says, Ya Rasulullah, Araita in Lakitu Rajulan min al Kufar Faktatalna. He puts a scenario, hypothetical situation where he says, Oh, the Messenger of Allah, what do you think about it? That in the battlefield I, am, I confront an opponent. A kafir. And we fight against one another. And in that combat between me and him, he's able to use his sword to strike on my arm and he cuts it. But then he says, We continue the fight until I am about to overcome him, although I am injured severely. But then he goes behind the tree or over, you know, to run away from me. And when I am about to, you know, hit him, فَقَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِلَّهِ When I am about to hit him, this fellow says, I believe in Allah. Then Miqdad says, أَأَقْتُلُهُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ بَعْدَ أَنْ قَالَهَا Now the mas'ala comes in after this story. He says, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Do I kill him? Because I know he is not sincere in what he is saying. He has already cut my, you know, one arm. Now that I'm about to overcome him, he says, Aslam to Lillah. Do I kill him or not? What is the response? And this is from Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. The Prophet says, La taqtulu. Miqdad, in this situation, you should not kill him. Fa in qataltahu. And if you kill him, fa innahu bi manzalitika qabla an taqtulu. وَإِنَّكَ بِمَنْزِلَتِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَقُولُ كَلِمَتُهُ الَّتِي قَالَ Just think about it. You know, he says, if you kill him, then he will be in your position, which you had before killing him. What was the position and status of Miqdal? He is considered to be, by the, in the words of the Prophet, Somebody who was on the eighth level of Iman, where he says there are ten levels of Iman, on the Salman is on the tenth, Abu Dhar is on the ninth, Miqdad is on the eighth. So he's on that level of Iman. That is his manzila. There is a hadith from the Prophet where he says that, you know, the Jannah is waiting to welcome certain individuals and he names them and one of them is Miqdad. That is his manzila. 
But the Prophet says, if you kill him, your position that I have described about you, you know, that will go to him. And your position will become like his position before he said those words. And what was this position of this fellow? He was not only a kafir, he was a kafir a harbi. A non-Muslim who is combatant against, fighting against Islam. And so, you know, just think about it. And this is there. And I would like to emphasize, this is from Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. But what do we see? When we look at this conversation, this scenario presented by Mughdad, you know, when we read this and many similar ahadiths, this is where we see the disconnect between the ideal preached, the, uh, preached by Islam and the practice on the ground in the Muslim world at the moment. There is total disconnect there. What Islam says is one thing, what the Muslims are doing now is something else. You know, look at this situation in Pakistan at the moment. With the Shia, you know, killings going on. You know, first the Wahhabi militants used to target Shia Masajid in Friday prayers, or their Husseiniyah, or their processions. But once the community became vigilant and they have security now, you know, it's not easy to penetrate those areas. So these Wahhabi, you know, militants have, have now found a new method. And we saw this from last year in September, where the new method is that they go around stopping the buses which takes passengers from one city to another. And then they will, you know, ask the passengers to go down and check their ID cards. And if the names sound like a name of a Shia, they are separated from the rest. And then they are shot. This happened in uh, September for the first time in Balochistan. But it seems that this method has now become their, you know, new method of targeting and killing Shias. Just in this, this year, and we are still not in the middle of April. January, February, March, today is 13th of April. Look at the numbers. These kinds of killings, in January there were 58 people who were killed. In February, 71 Shias were killed in this way. In March, 30 Shias were killed. In April, till the 10th of this month, more than 100 people have been killed. Where they stopped the whole caravan of bus in the Gilgit northern areas of Pakistan. And what was their crime? This is going on everywhere from Balochistan to Sindh to Punjab, uh, you know, all, all different areas. And what is their crime? They say, Ali and Waliullah. Well, if they say, Ali and Waliullah, it's not only they who say it. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah number 5, Ayat 55, confirms this issue. When he says, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ وَهُمْ رَاكِئُونَ Go and look at Imam Fakhruddin Razi. Look at other Mufassirin of the Quran under this ayat. And they will say here, Wali applies to Allah and Rasul and Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. But you don't want to agree? That's fine. But who gives you the right to kill somebody who believes in Ali and Waliullah? You know, this is where we have to go back to Surah Ghafir or Surah Mu'min. That's another name of it. Surah number 40 of the Quran, ayah 28, where in the story of Musa and Fir'aun, when Fir'aun and his advisors sat down and said, what do we do with Musa? And they said, you know, we should kill him. 
a member from the family of Fir'aun. وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنِ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانُهُ There was a member of Fir'aun's family, probably his cousin, who was hiding his faith, he was a believer. So he was practicing taqiyya. What does he say to Fir'aun and the advisors? He says, أَغْتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولُ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ Are you going to kill somebody just because he believes that Allah is his Lord? That's not a justified way, you know. وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ He came with proof from your Lord that he, what he says is the truth. And even if you don't believe in him, وَإِنْ يَكُوْ كَاذِبًا فَعَلَيْهِ كَذِبُهُ If he's a liar, then the lie goes on him. وَإِنْ كَانَ صَادِقًا وَإِنْ يَكُوْ صَادِقًا when, If he is truthful, then the punishment that he is threatening you against will come on to you. And that is our response. If you don't believe in what we say, Ali wa Allah, you go your way, we go our way. There is no basis an taqtulu rajulan an yaqulu rabbi Allah. And this is, this is a simple message. Unfortunately, it doesn't go into the minds of these people who have been totally brainwashed with the Wahhabi ideology supported by Saudi Arabia. The whole fitna in Pakistan going on comes from them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them if they have the ability to be guided aright or may Allah destroy them. In Ahsan al-Hadith, Kitab Allah al-Aziz, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Wal-Asr, Inna al-Insana la fi khusr, إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحليم الكريم غافر الظنب وقابل الطوب وهو الغفور الرحيم سبحان من سبقت رحمته غضبها وبسط الأيدين بالرحمة سبحان من لم يكلف نفسا إلا دون بسحة وعفا عن السيئات ولم يجاز بها سبحان من لا يزداد على معاصي العباد إلا كرما وجودا ولا كثرة الذنوب إلا عفوا وصفحا نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو العتوف للعباد بجوده والعواد على المظنبين بحلمه ونشهد أن محمد نبيه وحبيبا سيد المرسلين والشفيع المظنبين بعثه رحمة للعالمين صلى الله عليه وآله الداعين إلى سبيل الله بالحكمة والموزة الحسنة قادة الأمم وأولياء النعمة ومعدن الرحمة عسوك عباد الله بطوبا ما صلف من ذنوبكم The numbers I have given you doesn't come from Muslim or Pakistani sources this is all from the western sources it could be even much more than that but then the question comes up why they are doing this to the Shias? Do they deserve to be killed? Do not they believe in La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la? We recite that in our Adhan. We recite that in our Tashahud. Do not they believe in Muhammad and Rasulullah? Do not they believe in Quran to be the Kalamullah? Yes, there is a propaganda, Shias have a different Quran. And if anyone ever asks you about it, just say to them, go to any Shia center or masjid, unannounced, without seeking appointment. Just go and pick two or three Qurans in the shelf that they keep. You will see many of them are printed in Pakistan from Sunni presses. Many of them are from Saudi Arabia. This is the most ridiculous argument or you know, accusation they have against the Shias that we have a different Quran. 
No, we believe in Quran as Kalamullah. Do not we believe in the Arkan of Islam? We are gathered here to do Salat. In the month of Ramadan, if you hear about the Shias, at least you know one thing, that they have a controversy about the moon. So they know they fast. Otherwise, they wouldn't be worried about this issue, whether the moon was sighted or not. When you talk about Hajj, you will see Shias in very, very big numbers in, in Mecca. When it comes to the issue of zakat and khums and charity, of course, we are also there on the field. And so what is the issue? If you want to really hear what is the aqidah of the Shias and you don't want to hear from the books or the uh, ulama, you have killed so many Shias, at least go and participate in one of their funerals and listen to the talqeen. The talqeen which is recited to the deceased before he is buried, there you will get the summary of the beliefs of the Shias. And there the questions are very clearly. When the angels come and ask you, Man Rabbuka, who is your Lord? Your answer should be, Allah Jalla Jalali Rabbi. Who is your Rasul? It is Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is your kitab? It is Quran. What is your Kaaba? Your Qibla? It's Kaaba. So all these issues are there. If you don't believe in what we are saying, at least you should believe in the last rites of a person whom you killed. Go and listen to the talqeen which is being recited there. You know, sometimes we hear this, well, the blame goes to the Shias themselves because of the present day tabarra recited by some of the orators. And this is a very simplistic way of looking at this conflict in Pakistan. Yes, I do not deny that that, that has contributed, but in a very minor manner. The fire had been lit by the Wahhabi extremists long, long time ago. You know, these tabarra of the present days, we don't agree with that. You know, but that is not the cause. Otherwise, how do you explain? In 1963, 6th June, 1963, the day of Ashura, in Pakistan, in a city known as Khairpur, where the Shias had gathered in the Mambara for the Azhar of Sayyid al-Shuhuda on that day, you know, they closed the door from outside, locked it, and put the whole Imam Bayra on fire. And, you know, about 118 Shias in 1963 died because of their fi that fire. Lit by the Wahhabi, the Ubandi extremists. This has nothing to do with the present day Tabarra. Yes, this is a very minor part of it. But the problem goes back to these extremist views. We don't have problems even with Wahhabis. But those Wahhabis who believe in taking issues in their own hand to express their beliefs in a violent manner, those we definitely condemn and we are against them. Some of the Mu'mineen, you know, uh, when you look at the situation in Pakistan, According to even the report from Asian Human Rights Commission, these Wahhabi militants, now they are being backed by intelligence agencies and law enforcement agencies of Pakistan. The government itself is very weak. And that is where the issue is to really make it realize that this is only not them. Today it's Shias, tomorrow it will be the Sufis and other Sunnis who don't agree with the Wahhabi mentality. And this is where some of the Mu'minin have organized the rally tomorrow outside the Pakistani consulate to express their solidarity with the Shia minority in Pakistan and to protest against this inhuman and Islamic zulm which is being done against the Shia community over there. And I urge you tomorrow you know, it, the rally is at about 3 p.m. Um, you will get the flyers and the details in the announcements later on. 
just to show off for your support of the Shia minority in Pakistan and to express your voice against the Zalimin. I think one point I would like to clarify here for those who plan to go there. Remember that we are not against the Sunni Muslims. This is not a Shia Sunni issue. You know, we are talking about the distinction between the Sunnis and the Wahhabi mili militants. And that distinction has to be maintained even when we go about protesting on this issue. Even our play cards or the slogans should be very clear on this issue. That we don't have a problem with the Sunni Muslims, we have a problem with those Wahhabi militants who go around killing innocent Shias just because of their faith and because of that madhab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten the appearance of the Imam so that we can see justice and peace on a global level. Allahumma salli ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen wa shafil al-Mudhunabin nabiyyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa ala imam al-Muttaqeen wa amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatu Allah alayhi وعلى سيدتنا نساء العالمين سيدتنا فاطمة بنت رسول الله صلوات الله عليها وعلى سيد الشباب أهل الجنة الحسن المشتبى والحسين الشهيد بكر بلا عليه الصلاة والسلام وعلى أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي عليه الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على مولانا الحجة بن الحسن صاحب العصر والزمان ما حيا صار البدء والتغيان حادم أمنية الشرك والنفاق حاصد فرو البغ والشقاق صلوات الله والسلام عليه وعلى آباء الكرام على آباء الكرام ما اتصلت الليالي والايام اللهم عجل فرج وصح المخرج واكحل ناظرنا بنظره منا اليه واجعلنا من المستشهدين بين يديه وتفضل اللهم على امرائنا المؤمنين بمزيد التوفيقات وازدياد الاقبال وعلو الدرجات اللهم افعل بنا ما انت اهله ولا تفعل بنا ما نحن اهله بجاه محمد وعاله المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم اجمعين اللهم اجعلنا ممن يتذكر فتنفعه الذكرى إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون